Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to our West Coast faculty. My name is Jennifer Stiles, and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager for Nursing here at Jones & Bartlett Learning, and I'm pleased to welcome you to today's webinar presentation. I'm joined by my colleague, Mary Colleen Liberti. She's the Technology Product Manager here, and she will lead us through a live product demonstration of the LearnScapes. You know, we're really excited to introduce LearnScapes to you and show you all of the cutting edge capability that this virtual simulation tool has to offer. Just a few quick housekeeping notes before we get started. All participant lines will be muted, and we do encourage you to use the chat feature within WebEx to ask questions, which we'll answer live at the end of the presentation. This chat feature can be found on the navigation panel, which is located at the top of your screen in the form of a pull-down tray. You can message me, the host, Jennifer Stiles directly. This presentation will be recorded and will be made available on the nursing community site within about one week for you to refer to or share with your colleagues. We have a great session planned for you today. We'll start by discussing and defining immersive learning and virtual simulations. We'll also talk about LearnScapes, what they are, we'll define them. We'll also show you the various topic areas that we have LearnScapes created for. And Mary Colleen, our technology product manager, will lead us through a live product demonstration for each of these products. We'll also discuss how you can integrate this tool into your curriculum. We'll give you some student testimonials. And then lastly, we'll open up the line for Q&A at the end of the hour. So what is immersive learning? Immersive learning is a system of complete immersion in a new subject in order to gain skills in a particular subject area. It is optimized blend of simulation, game element, and also pedagogy. Immersive learning is a great way to present more interactive and compelling skills-based training to your students. And in many cases, video and an engaging real-world storyline is employed. Learners can gather information throughout and create or choose solutions based upon their pre-existing knowledge and the information that they find within the scenario. It is distinguished from other learning methods by its ability to simulate realistic scenarios and environments that give learners the opportunity to practice skills and interact in contextual situations without risk. So what are LearnScapes? For those of you who are unfamiliar with LearnScapes, they are a virtual learning tool for students. With content aligned to premier Jones and Bartlett learning textbooks, LearnScapes expose students to a variety of day-in-the-life career experiences through cutting-edge immersive learning simulations developed with our online learning partner, Toolwire, Inc. Students develop the critical thinking, the problem solving, and the communication skills necessary to apply their knowledge to situations that they will encounter in their future professions. This slide is a representation of the specific Navigate Scenario products that we have created for nursing and healthcare. As you can see, we have Navigate Scenario for nursing research, healthcare policy, healthcare law, healthcare ethics, healthcare delivery, and healthcare finance. The bullet points you see beneath each one of the scenarios represents the LearnScapes module within each of them. Mary Colleen in her live product demonstration will review just about every single one of these in, in, uh, briefly, except for healthcare delivery today. One important element to note is that of the LearnScapes you see here on the slide, nursing research uh, has the most episodes or LearnScapes per product, so just keep that in mind but we weren't able to include all of those on the slide. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the topic areas that are covered within each of these Navigate Scenario products so that you have a feel for what the students will learn and what they can expect in this virtual simulation. So for instance, LearnScapes for Nursing Research exposes students to a variety of day-in-the-life nursing career experiences. And through these simulations, Nursing students will develop the critical thinking, problem solving, and communication skills that are necessary to apply their knowledge to the situations that they will encounter in the future of nursing profession. As we just mentioned, this product has 16 LearnScapes, and each topic builds upon one another as they progress throughout the product. The textbooks that you see here listed on the screen 
are textbooks that can be bundled uh, with this particular product. So you don't have to be using one specific textbook. There's a lot of flexibility here that you could be using either our Introduction to Nursing Research by um, Carol Boswell and Sharon Cannon, or you could be using evidence-based practice for nursing. So a lot of flexibility there. The next Navigate scenario is for healthcare policy. And this general storyline is the development of healthcare policy and the legislative process. And it talks about how you move a policy into law and then talks about the implementation. This one includes four separate learnscapes talking about policy analysis and development, going from policy to law, implementing policy in the healthcare delivery system, and then lastly, evaluating a healthcare policy. And these two textbooks that you see, The Nation's Health and Essentials of Health Policy and Law, are two textbooks that correspond that you could use with this product. The healthcare learnscape for law has four different scenarios, and it brings the learner um, into the role of healthcare administrator, and they work at the Bright Road Healthcare System. In it, the student is required to review legal cases and use the concepts of healthcare law to determine the legal risks and the liabilities. So some of the topics that the students will go through in this particular Navigate scenario process include um, a patient that's brought into a hospital and gets a staph infection because the proper precautions were not taken up front. Secondly, they cover medication errors. Uh, the third learnscape covers uh, a patient who goes in for surgery and has the wrong limb removed and how, um, how to deal with that situation. And lastly, the last learnscape within this product deals with the failure to obtain consent around a healthcare worker who neglected to get the proper consent from a patient before, um, before surgery or treatment. So you can see all of these learnscapes truly give students real-world scenario-based learning and the opportunity to experience what it will be like when they take on each of these roles once they graduate from their program. So let's move on and we'll talk about the Learnscapes for Healthcare Ethics. This has four different learnscapes and the student will play different roles within the healthcare system and be presented with ethical dilemmas in various opposing viewpoints. And in some cases, the right decision might be subjective. So they will have to you know, use what they've learned in the, in the Learnscape as well as in the course to find out what's the best course of action. So some of the things that they're gonna deal with are equipment purchasing, stockpiling as a procurement manager, labor and delivery services, as well as confidentiality. The last Learnscape we're gonna cover today takes the student through uh, the role as chief executive officer chief financial officer and board member in the realm of healthcare finance. And students will apply their knowledge of healthcare finance to make decisions that directly impact hospitals and patients, such as whether to relocate a hospital facility and whether to propose a bond to finance a major hospital renovation. So in these four um, modules of the Learnscapes, students have the opportunity to explore critical cases for billing and coding, rate negotiation crisis, taking a firm financial position or not, and then lastly, to move or not to move. Will they move that hospital location or facility or won't they? So these are, um, you know, just wanted to provide you with a little bit of a high-level overview of each of these products. And at this point, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Mary Colleen. You're going to see the screen switching just a little bit while I change the presenter rights over to Mary Colleen. And she's actually going to bring us live into the product. So you're going to see a couple of different products, as we talked about the nursing research learnscape, as well as snippets of the four healthcare learnscapes. So I'll turn it over to you, Mary Colleen. Thank you. Good afternoon and good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I'm really excited to be able to show you these products. Jen, I just want to confirm that you can see my desktop and you should be able to see the Learnscapes for Nursing Research. Yes, I can see that. Great. Um, so just a couple of um, housekeeping tips um, and points uh, before I move forward. 
So there's going to be a little bit of movement on your screen today simply because of um, the different products that I'm showing. So I'm going to be doing a little toggling between the, the various products that I'm going to be showing. So uh, excuse uh, me up front uh, for that disruption. Um, you'll see your screen change. And, um, and you know, there will be a couple of minutes of transition um, between some of those. Another thing I wanted to mention is I'm going to be spending a little bit more time in the LearnScape for Nursing Research. And the reason being is um, I really want to be able to show you and point out some of the fantastic features of the user interface um, and really how um, easy it is for students to move through this product um, while really, you know, responding to this e extremely engaging content. So this is a really different experience that your students would have. And uh, then we're going to talk a little bit later about how best to integrate uh, a LearnScape into your curriculum. So let me get started. So uh, what you're looking at right now is the, um, the actual user interface for the nursing research, how a person actually gets into it or a student would access this. And um, we're going to be looking at LearnScape Two, which is finding sources of evidence. So just an overview of this product. As Jen mentioned, this one is a little bit different than some of the other LearnScape products that we're going to be showing you because it has 16 scenarios. And each one of those scenarios ranges in terms of the amount of time it would take a student to get through it, about, uh, probably about 10 to uh, 15 minutes maximum, depending on the amount of reading that's included in the actual scenario. The, this actually follows very closely with our Schmidt text. So um, if, a, if it, you are using that, um, that evidence-based practice text with this, you'll find a lot of connections and synergies there. But this can be used with any program and with any nursing research book. Um, what is also nice about this product is you'll see that um, everything builds. So as you go through LearnScape, the first scenario, the LearnScape 1, identifying research questions, you're building upon information and then the student would move into LearnScape 2, LearnScape 3, and so they're really building upon each one of those, um, those experiences. So to optimize the experience for the student, it's really great if they can work consecutively through those. However, it's not required, but it, it but really optimizes the experience for the student. So um, I'm going to show you now the actual LearnScape. We're going to get into it. And these, these LearnScapes um, focus on a, a participant or the user um, who is chairing a committee. Um, this person is going to be uh, working with their peers at a hospital. Um, so they're working with all different people from all different backgrounds. And they're really looking at ways to utilize evidence-based practice to find a solution to medication errors at the hospital. So it's a, it's a really interesting real-world situation. And let me get started. You're going to hear audio. So I, I have uh, this on, and hopefully you'll be able to hear it well. And let's get started. It's nice to see you all again. I do apologize that I have a meeting that I was unable to reschedule today, and I'll have to leave shortly. You all know what it's like to be pulled in different directions every day. So I'm going to jump right in. As a committee, we determined that we'll use this PISO question to guide our research. And that's the well, PISO question. What are your thoughts? Sure. That's why we're meeting, right? So, so you're going to find as, as the, the, the first person, so this is very much a gaming-like experience for the student. So they're, they're basically communicating with that committee through the use of their mouse. So they're going to click on this. I'm clicking my response. I would have to say yes. Absolutely. If we are all in agreement with that question, we can proceed with our goal. I hope everyone is fully on board because now the heavy lifting begins. Our next step is a literature review, you know, reviewing journals and reports about the topic. You're going to have to weed through a lot of literature to find relevant information. 
You'll probably be doing most of your research online. Can anyone tell me the most important part of an online search? So now the student has some different options, and there's a little bit of a branching going on in terms of how the, the participants are going to react. So, um, and one thing you're going to notice in these LearnScape products is that the student has a little bit of hand-holding. So we do have some self-assessment opportunities where the student's going to receive immediate feedback. And then there's, there's just out-and-out -out assessment opportunities where students are actually going to be assessed and you're going to participate in that by utilizing an instructor's rubric to actually grade or guide the student. Um, as you'll see as I, as I answer this, so, I'm gonna, so you can see one of them is kind of highlighted, kind of guiding the student. So this is my answer. Yes. Knowing how your resources are structured helps you search more efficiently with keywords. Remember that because it will save you time. And there are good resources to help, namely the hospital library, so use them. Now, for our next meeting, I'd like you each to be able to contribute at least two articles you think will be useful to our research. We will start with looking at single studies, but keep in mind the better sources for the evidence are systematic reviews. Ready to get started? I can't wait. Okay, I'm ready. I'm going to move forward. I love your enthusiasm. Let's get started then. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must run to another meeting. I look forward to seeing everyone's progress in our next meeting. Okay, now we're, we're moving on to a new scenario. And, and this is a really great part of, I'm gonna just turn the audio off for a second. Um, this is a really great part of these products is that um, the student can actually move through into these different real world environments. And so they're always engaged, they're always moving forward, and as you'll notice, they're, they're really engaging in a, a using uh, what we call natural assessment, um, which are ways to be assessed in the product using a tool or, a, or some sort of um, scenario or um, task that they might have to do in the real world. And so they're going to actually simulate that and again, offers a ton of engagement for the, for the student. It also allows the student to really have uh, opportunities to do things that they might nece not necessarily have practical application for. Um, so if they're built, building out a, a journal grid as, as they do in this scenario, or if they're actually doing some form of um, research, they're actually getting results. They're actually seeing what the impact of those tasks and um, each step in, in that task um, impact the final outcome. So let me get the audio back on, and then we're going to go through some of the tools. Okay, so she's, the, so, so what I'm doing right now is I'm looking to get some guidance about um, the best way to research um, information. Of course. What do you need? So I need to um, learn a little bit more about research methods. That's an interesting subject. I can definitely help. I suggest that you start with CINAHL. You know what that is? I'm going to answer this. That's right. You'll have a lot of luck there. But it is a broad database, and you could get information you don't really need or want. Are you comfortable with the various search tools to help narrow your results? OK, I don't know. So I'm going to. Oh, it's simple. You'll probably find Boolean operators and truncation most useful in this case. Boolean operators help you include and exclude words in your search by using and, or, and not. And as for a truncation, you can search for words that start with the same root by entering the first letters of the word followed by an asterisk. That helps you find plurals and things like that. Okay. I'm going to just hold us for a second so I can point out some of the tools that we have to work with. Um, the, the one thing that's great about this product is, as I mentioned, some of the hand-holding and the student moves through this, um, they have this great menu. And it really allows them access 
to really move through the product and, and really control their learning experience in many cases. So there's a combination of a forced march to a certain extent where the student is kind of led through the pr program, but they also have some control to move through the program and re-review re things and really use it as a tool um, to help them move fo forward um, with this, these concepts. So as we move through the, the menu, they have yeah, standard video-based controls, pause, they can fast forward, they can reverse, um, they can save their work, um, they can turn the audio on and off. But then I want to just click on the menu, and I'm going to point out some really unique tools that are really tied to this product specifically. So the first thing is the notepad, and let me just click on my notes. So this gives the, the student an opportunity um, to really add notes specific to this content. So one, two, one, two, three, three, four, okay, and I can add that. So, and then they can print this out, and they can hold on to this information. Um, or late, later on, or you know, if they found specific terms that they want to, to review within their text, they can do that. The other nice thing is there's this great tool for key takeaways. So this information really helps the student. It, it, it basically summarizes everything for the student. And this is found in all the LearnScapes. So again, they can print this information out. It's very easy to utilize. Another really great tool in this menu is the scene. So a student can jump ahead into a scene, and if they want to go back and re-review something, they can go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to jump ahead to using the journal grid, and you can kind of get a feel for how you can move through that content. So here's an example of one of those um, using real-world tools and, and communication tools to actually communicate with, with the people within um, your actual project. So in this case, they're going to be filling out a journal grid. And here's an example of one of those natural assessments. So the, the student is just going to be doing a drag and drop. And it's actually going to help them if they're not doing it correctly. And we'll move through. And here we go again. So we're moving forward, and now you're getting a phone call. And here, here's some information coming through a phone. And, and this is, again, you know, really bringing in that kind of, um, you know, very relevant tools and communication that really engages students. So, so it does have a real feeling of what they might deal with in a real-world situation. And here they're speaking, there's some communication going back back and forth. So I'm going to stop, just pause here for a second oh. just to show you a couple of additional tools on the menu. And this is going to point out the assessment. So a student is going through and they're being assessed in certain portions of these programs. And in the, this example, you'll see um, as we were just starting to, to speak with the um, preceptor, this is a conversation and, and really a assessment that's happening within that conversation. And, and then as the student answers those questions, those are being recorded, and then the student would actually save this assessment, and then they would email it to the instructor or, put, or save it to a Dropbox on a learning management system. And then the, the instructor would go back and utilize their instructor rubric to grade this. So again, another great example of, of how the student is being assessed, but in some cases, that focus and that, that um, engagement value is not being disturbed because they're, they're, they're very engaged in the action of the moment in that scenario. So I'm going to quickly move from um, this, this actual scenario and move on to one of the other LearnScapes so that you can get a feel for some of what else uh, we have to offer. I just want to point out a couple of additional things. 
you can actually print out a entire transcript for this product. So that, that's a great tool for students as well. And again, allows them to have a, a complete transcript of the entire scenario and allows them to be able to study this. And in some cases, we're dealing with you know, different types of learners, and some learners really want to utilize a tool like this um, you know, in addition to the actual video piece of this. So I'm going to move back into the next scenario. And we're going into the Learnscape for Health policy. And this Learnscape has, as Jen mentioned, this has four scenarios. And these are a little bit different than the nursing research scenarios um, in the sense that they're a little bit longer. They're about 15 to 20 minutes. And they're more discreet, meaning that a student doesn't have to move in any particular order to go through these. They are related in some cases. But for the most part, they are completely discreet and can be assigned um, directly. So let me just go ahead, I'm going to close this one and move to, let's see here. And we're going to go into four. So this one is, um, we're working to, um, Evaluate our health care policy. And um, the Department of Health and Human Services has done an evaluation of our health care policy. And now um, we need to do look at monitoring, monitoring and reporting of medica medical errors or medication errors. And the one thing that's great about these labs is that. Um, um, it, as you can see, it's detecting bandwidth. They, they're very flexible. They work with any system and under a lot of browser instances. So you're really going to find that these are they're great tools to work with. Um, the, the, from a technical standpoint, the, these really work so well. And even if a student is, is using this in a situation where they are not able to get an Internet connection, they can actually download this to their hard drive and work offline. So there's a lot of options. These are, they're, again, really flexible and, and work under a lot of different conditions. So let's, let's start moving through this one. And yeah, I'm interested in hearing what he had to say. OK, so we're, we're working with our committee. And um, I, we're, we're um, basically working with one of the committee members. We're meeting with them. That's a pretty big concept. Making a policy is one thing, but making sure it works is something else. First, let's talk about the reasons for evaluation. Which of these do you think are possible reasons for evaluation? OK. So here's an example of one of those national assessments. So in this case, this is a multi-response. So I'm going to go through and let's see. I think I'm going to pick all of them. Great job. Yes. There are a lot of reasons for program evaluation. We don't need to go into all of those, since you're obviously most concerned with regulations now. But let's explore a few anyway. What would you like to talk about? OK, I'm going to, uh, I want to determine the extent of the problem. Well, before you even talk about regulating something, you need to determine how bad the problem is. If it's bad, then it's worth developing a program to address the issue. But it would be a huge waste of money to spend all that time before you even assess the situation. So an evaluation program is designed to do just that. Determine if the problem warrants a huge expenditure in time and money. Okay. When you're talking about a long-term program, you could potentially be talking about millions, billions, or more dollars. That is a huge investment. If the program isn't effective, then it's a waste. That is unsustainable. A new program always starts out with grant money or some influx of resources, but that won't be around forever. Okay, I'm going to go to this, the third option. 
Monitoring operations is what you do after setting a program into place. It's meant to track outcomes and report to the program sponsors and officials. Of course, to do this, it's a lot easier if the program has very clear objectives and desired outcomes. With these, you can set up systems to track actual progress and see how it compares to what you expected. If it's on track, great. If not, what's going wrong? Okay, so we're going back and forth here, and in, in, in some cases we're... we're um, it's like medicine. It may be designed to treat cough, but you don't know when you take it that it's also going to make your skin turn blue. Unfortunately, with a social program, it can work the same way. You may spend a lot of money boosting the police department, but then not have enough money for libraries. But you need to evaluate them to determine what these effects are and if they're worth the benefits of the program itself. Yeah, we've been talking about that for a while now. But what is interesting is that meeting the requirements of a law, being in compliance, does not mean the program itself is successful at all. That's why there are so many different forms of evaluation. Spend a million dollars complying with a law that does no good, well, the law is a waste and should change. So quickly, I'm just going to show you um, in the menu that there is assessment tied to this product. And Here's some examples. Um, these are different questions that the, the, the student is actually going through, and they can actually go in and revisit that scene if they need additional help to answer that question. So they may have read, uh, watched the actual interaction uh, through the video, but they feel like they need to, to revisit that scene, so they can easily do that. So I'm going to just jump into um, our next scenario. Um, product, uh, which is the Learnscape for Healthcare Law. And let me see here. Here we go. And um, again, this is another one of those scenario products that um, in terms of the amount of scenarios that we have or the Learnscape, uh, we have four of those. Again, a little bit lengthier. Uh, they're, they can work discreetly. They're not, you don't necessarily have to go through them in a, any particular order. Um, and they, they tie directly to Jones and Bartlett text. So again, you can work with those texts as well. And we're going to go into uh, the third um, Learnscape, which of course I couldn't resist because it was the wrong body part one. So that, that's always exciting to go to, to go to one of those. So let me just get, get some of these out of our way and then And we'll go into this. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. I think this is a kind of ex an exciting one. So we're working with the general counsel to determine the hospital's liability tied to this, to an, uh, a physician error. I'm gonna go right to the beginning of the scene so we absolutely make sure Okay, so a little bit of an overview that you can read through. It gives um, the student enough time to read. Hey, I finally get to see your office. Very nice. Okay, I'm responding. Well, I have another case I could use your help with. It's a negligence lawsuit that a Mr. Price has filed against the hospital after our surgeon apparently amputated his good leg instead of the one that needed to be removed. Okay. That's my question. How could that have happened? I don't know how this happened. I'm still a little shocked after reading it, to be honest. Okay. Did the leg really, wrong leg really get amputated? Hey, Mary Colleen, it's Jen. Sorry for the yeah. interruption. Um, I'm not able to see anything. I have a dark screen right now, 
so it didn't uh, look like that image transferred, but terribly wrong. could be something on my end. Okay, thank you. Let me just... Uh... Um, you know what? I actually think it might be an Internet issue on my end, so my apologies. Okay. I haven't heard anything from any of our attendees, so you know what? I think it's just an Internet issue. Sorry about that. To talk to the surgeon okay. and one of the surgery nurses to get more details on this. Then you can help me decide whether the hospital could be found liable for this one. Beyond that, if you think that we might face a motion by the plaintiff claiming res ipsa loquitur is applicable during an ensuing trial. Okay. I uh, just wanted to point out something that's really great about this product um, is that at times um, it's reminding the students that, you know, you should take notes, especially when you're dealing with a lot of legal terms, things that might, concepts that might be a little bit difficult. Um, they, you know, the program is actually encouraging you to, to look at this and, and take notes. So, and it, you get that drop down from the menu. So that's a great, a great tool. The other thing that I think is, is fantastic about these products is that the, the, the students really get an opportunity to work with all different sorts of people, um, you know, really moving through the gamut of what these experiences might be. So they may not necessarily have that experience you know, working with general counsel for um, a hospital or a corporation, but but through this product, they're able to to get a feel for that. Sure, res ipsa loquitur is a Latin term meaning the thing speaks for itself. It's the legal doctrine that shifts the burden of proof in a case from the plaintiff to the defendant. In other words. It's a rule of law where an inference of negligence is permitted from the mere occurrence of an injury where the defendant owes a duty and possesses the sole power of preventing the injury by exercise of reasonable care. Okay. So, um, again, I'm so sorry that I can't spend uh, the entire time looking through this uh, scenario and sharing it with you, but I did want to point out a couple of things um, that, again, there's another assessment tool, and in this case, this is a recommendation. Uh, that this, that um, you know that you're going to be giving as as the um, as the the person consulting with the chief counsel, and so in doing this, it's a, going to be a written recommendation, and then again, that's going to be saved, and um, that can be emailed to the instructor, and you'll have that instructor's rubric um, as an instructor to use as your guide. Okay, I'm going to move on. We're going to move to healthcare ethics. Let me move on to that. And we're looking at um, a particular um, scenario. In this case, for, for healthcare ethics, um, we have actually four different learnscapes, and they, they feature very, very different uh, ethical situations, um, as Jen mentioned. And in this case, um, there's the, this is tied to uh, really closing a, a very critical uh, community-based um, labor and delivery service. So something that's very important for the community and really kind of weighing what's best for the hospital versus the community. So let's open that. I'm going to start right from the beginning. Thank you for meeting on such short notice. We were just starting to talk about the issue. I know you're new to our team. Have you met Kimberly O'Neill? The financial officer. Yes, it's good to see you. Kim and I were just talking about what kinds of services we currently provide. This hospital has one OBGYN on staff, Dr. Linda Miller, who provides labor and delivery services. Okay, so we're looking to see if we have a backup OBGYN. No, we don't. We have staff that can generally help out in an emergency until Dr. Miller arrives, but none that have her qualifications. 
Okay, I'm going to answer the second one. No, unfortunately. We are in a historically underserved area, and it's difficult to recruit OBGYN specialists to come out here to practice. We're the only hospital in the county. The closest hospital to provide labor and delivery services is about 80 miles away, which is a pretty long drive for someone who's in labor. Well, cost, quite frankly. Dr. Miller's malpractice insurance increases every year, and it's becoming difficult to keep her here due to her not having backup coverage. And women often wait until late in the second trimester or even in the third trimester to start their prenatal care, which can make things more complicated for their doctors. Are you talking about alternatives? Unfortunately, no. We floated that idea to him, but he was reluctant for the same reasons a lot of physicians don't go into obstetrics. He doesn't like unpredictable hours and doesn't want to carry the additional insurance. Okay, so I'm going to stop it right here just to give you a quick overview that, um, of what kind of assessment tools we have um, for this product. And again, this, is, this assessment is being delivered with um, through that, that natural assessment, and students are going to be answering questions, um, you, you know, either multiple choice questions or multi-response questions, and then again, that's going to be saved and emailed to the instructor or um, added to a Dropbox on an LMS. And um, I think, you know, again, another excellent example of, you know, the kind of interesting ethical scenarios that have been put together in this product and really giving students an opportunity to do something that they might, they, they're being exposed to something they may not necessarily be able to do. And especially for something, uh, an ethical issue, they're really getting to understand the impact of those decisions that are made. So that, this is a great, great tool um, to, to use um, and really offers students, um, you know, an, a real immersive learning experience. Okay, I'm going to close off on this. And, we're going to quickly just jump into healthcare finance, our last LearnScape. And in this case, um, this is a, 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 a scenario that's tied to, uh, you know, billing and coding at the hospital uh, where revenue is down. So, um, you know, really looking at that and trying to understand how to, to answer that, answer being the CFO, how do you answer that and how do you investigate the reason for that um, for the CEO of, of the hospital? Hi there. How's the new CFO? I see the place hasn't fallen apart without me yet. Okay, so that's that conversation back and forth. I'm here to get coffee with an old friend. I work right down the street. I'm on the faculty at the university, an adjunct, actually. I keep trying to retire, but I just can't seem to stop working. Responding? No, just picking her up. Why? What's up? To find a cause? Yes, that could be from any number of things. Where is it showing up? Okay, so it's tied to outpatient visits. And I know it. Between lower state and federal revenues, high labor, and liability costs, not to mention rising costs for regulatory compliance, it's a huge challenge to be a CFO nowadays. I have to be honest. I don't miss the stress. Okay. So true. Well, what are you doing to research it? That's where I would start, too. And you know, Michael is great. He always goes the extra mile. I really miss working with him. And 
obviously wanting to go back to the former CFO is always a positive. Of course. Why don't you email me, and we can set up a time to meet. Perfect. And don't worry. You'll figure it out. Remember, have all your ducks aligned before you approach the CEO with a solution. Meredith likes it when you have the answer ready before she's even heard the problem. That's a very diplomatic way to put it. You'll do well here. If you need any help anytime, please let me know. Okay. So I'm going to just quickly um, just show you what the assessment looks like for this one. Um, so again, this one is more multiple choice based. Um, depending on the scenario, um, those natural assessments, that back and forth between peers and um, those, those folks that uh, you're working with to get answers and to resolve uh, these real world problems. Um, that's coming through within this actual assessment. And then again, uh, this can be emailed to the instructor um, and, and the instructor has an instructor's rubric to guide them. Um, so I just want to um, finish up and uh, we have a couple more comments that we'd like to make about these products. And so Jen, I want to return this over to you. Uh, just one thing I wanted to say, um, obviously we've only given you just a hint of, um, you know, how immersive these products can be. It really, it, it really uh, is best for uh, you to kind of take a deep dive and, and work with one of our sales reps and, and we can give you access to these so you can go through them yourselves and really understand, um, you know, what a great experience it is and something that can be used um, with uh, students either as a, um, to augment you know, uh, that textbook content um, or a courseware solution um, or you be used as a homework solution. That was great. Thank you so much, Mary Colleen. And I think I'll just wait for you to pass along the, um, the baton back to me. You should be seeing my PowerPoint slides in just a minute. But this truly is a great tool. And the next slide that I'm going to show you, okay, now I'm back. Give me just a few seconds here. I'm going to share everything. Just taking a few minutes here. We're going to we're going to show you some great student testimonials. And I'll, Mary Colleen, I'll just confirm. Have you confirmed that you can see the student feedback slide? We can see it. Excellent. Great. So, you know, our customers really love this product and our students do too and I thought that it would be really powerful if we shared with you some student feedback that we've received and I won't read through all of these quotes but just want to summarize that the end user really feels that these virtual simulation gives them exposure to what it's like to work in the real world, to work in teams, how important it is to communicate. It really helped teach them how to speak in a hospital setting, uh, the importance of evidence-based practice, how to start a research project, and you know, it really gives them a feel for what it's like to work in a hospital setting and what their future career will be like as a nurse or healthcare professional. So, just wanted to share that with you. And before we move on, um, you know, to the Q and A, just have a couple more slides. One of them is on pricing. I'm sure that you've been wondering throughout the presentation, what's the price of this product? So. LearnScape, if it's bundled with a textbook, any of the textbooks that you heard me present a little bit earlier per each of the product, it's $25 when it's bundled. If it's purchased by an institution, then it's $40 standalone. And then lastly, if it's purchased individually by a student and it's not purchased with a textbook, then it's $75. So if you have any questions about that during the Q&A, just let me know. And in terms of some resources and information that you can reference, to check out some of our videos, you can visit our Navigate site, and that URL is jblnavigate.com. If you visit the area that is nursing or health professions, you'll have access to a few different videos on some of the products that Mary Colleen demonstrated to you today. The Nursing Community site, which can be found at jblnursing.com, is also a great reference for you. And we have a whole section dedicated to immersive learning. 
If you're interested in more of the healthcare products, either on the print or digital side, I welcome you to visit our main website at jblearning.com slash healthadmin. And the last URL you see there is how you can contact your sales representative if you want a personalized demo or if you want to talk about adding this solution. So at this point, I'm going to bring Tabitha